I've got some homemade ricotta here and a homemade halloumi style grilling cheese that I made in yesterday's video. If you missed that one, by the way, it'll be in this card or in the video description. But today I'm going to take both of these cheeses and make a recipe using each of them, starting with the ricotta. I only want to make a small batch of shortbread, so I'm going to go for 75 grams of plain flour, 25 grams of ground rice, 35 grams of caster sugar, 65 grams of butter. Now this shortbread will not have any water in the dough, it's just going to be the butter that brings it together, which is going to make it short and crumbly. That's why it's called shortbread. And just for a little bit of flavour, I'm going to put in some almond extract. You could use vanilla extract, but I quite like the flavour of almond. So probably about half a teaspoonful. Then using my pastry blender, you can just use your fingers. I'm just going to rub in that fat into the dry ingredients. Now unlike a pastry recipe where we get kind of a breadcrumb texture, this is going to come together into a crumbly dough because there is sufficient fat in here to stick the, all the flour grains together. And so rather than this turning into a loose breadcrumb texture, it's actually, we can see it's coming together into chunks now. And that is exactly what's desired for shortbread. I'm just going to knead it a tiny bit to try and bring it together, but it's it's going to resist me. So we've got a, a ball of very crumbly dough, and now I'm just going to actually dust the board with a bit of ground, ground rice rather than flour. Now I need to roll this out thin. And it's going to crack and crumble at the edges, and we just have to accept that because, because of what it is. I'm not going to worry too much about bits that come off because this can be re-rolled. And then that technique we learned from the Gwen Marchant book about cutting rounds with a fluted pastry cutter. And in the scones video, I pressed the bottom of a jam jar into there. The only thing is the jam jar's got a slight concavity to the bottom of it and that made a little dome in the middle of the pastry. So I'm actually going to use the bottom of a Nutella glass today. Actually, I'm going to put these on a tray first. And I'm not expecting these to rise at all. So they can be spaced quite close together. The texture of this dough is a lot like uh, marzipan, actually. It's... Kind of a soft and got a almost slightly gritty texture to it. Okay, got to work fast now because this butter is starting to soften. And again, just because I don't like waste, I'll gather all those little bits into one place and I'll just smoosh them down to make a rather untidy last one. Sure, it'll taste just as good. Okay, and if I put that the other way up on the tr on the baking tray, I'm sure it won't look all that different. Right, now these are very thin pieces of shortbread. And I'm going to make that even worse with this bottom of this glass, just by pressing into them to make something that's a bit like a tart case. I need something on the bottom of this glass to stop it sticking. I think it's strictly necessary because of what we're going to be making, but just help the filling not to run off the edges. I'm going to chill those in the fridge for probably 10 20 minutes and then put them in a 180 degree oven. And I have to watch them really closely because they're ever so thin. Right now, before I put these in the oven, I am just going to give them a little bit of pricking across the bottom here just so that they don't rise up in the middle. 
there's no leavening in this shortbread but steam might develop underneath and push the middle up and I'm going to put these in and I reckon they'll probably only take about five minutes actually that was nearer ten minutes and I had to take them out and turn them halfway and they've just got the very slightest golden brown on them the indentations I made have completely disappeared but while they're still warm I can put those back because at the moment they're still warm and pliable but very soon they will cool and com go completely crispy so perhaps I should have done this all along actually gone for this way all along bake them first then indent them when they're done that's good right going to leave those to cool on the tray before I try to do anything with them because they're going to be very very delicate at the moment they'll be still quite flexible five minutes of cooling and look at this these biscuits are wafer thin and completely crisp so I'm going to make these into little mini cheesecake type of things with my ricotta cheese and I think a bit of pineapple topping for my ricotta shortbread cheesecakes is going to be pineapple or based on pineapple anyway so I've got a lovely fresh pineapple here you can tell it's nice and ripe because those come out easily and yeah you don't need to watch me chop up a pineapple obviously there's a lot more pineapple here than I'm going to use today so I'll chop it all up put some in the fridge and we'll use some of it to prepare the cheesecake topping pineapple for now which I've diced quite small pineapple for tomorrow or later which I've just cut into regular sort of pineapple cube type of pieces that will go in the fridge this I'm going to dress in a kind of honey glaze I've got some Scottish heather honey here mm, it smells really nice and we'll have about a tablespoon or two of that in the pan there and just a tiny splash of water to stop that from burning and I'm just going to melt this ever so gently over a low heat okay and that's just warmed through now and it's just starting to bubble so in with my pineapple I'm just really stirring that just to try and infuse some of the flavors together that's it so I'll just leave that together I'm going to taste that a little bit on the spoon there Oh my gosh. Wow. That honey is just so delicately floral. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, now for this halloumi style grilling cheese, I'm going to make a halloumi Hasselback tray bake, which is a recipe that I'm kind of adapting from something I saw in Olive magazine. I'll put a link in the video description to that recipe. So we're going to bake this in the oven with tomatoes and vegetables. Oven proof dish. About couple of tablespoons of olive oil, a diced red pepper, two cloves of garlic just chopped up into little pieces, about a teaspoonful of dried oregano, teaspoonful of sweet paprika, half a teaspoonful of smoked paprika and a little pinch of chili flakes and a tin of tomatoes. These are ready chopped tomatoes so tin of chopped tomatoes so just a little bit of water in the can partly to loosen up this sauce but also just to get the last bits of tomato out of there okay give that a little mix together just to combine those herbs into the sauce and then that's going to go in the oven just for 10 minutes until it bubbles up right while that's coming up to temperature I'm just going to take some pieces of this grilling cheese and I've got a couple of chopsticks here to stop the knife going all the way through and I'm just going to hassle back these pieces of grilling cheese. Now about two tablespoons of chopped capers. I'll just give them a little stir in. And then I'll just nestle down these little pieces of cheese into the sauce. And back into the oven for 45 minutes. Or until the top is all bubbly and crispy and opened up. Okay, rather less time than it said in the recipe I'm following I would say that's done it hasn't really opened up really as much as I might have liked and I suppose that's probably just because it's a different kind of cheese but I think that's more or less ready to serve I don't think we can take that any further that's going to burn to finish this a bit of lemon zest obviously unwaxed lemon some little snips of chives parsley would be more in keeping with the dish chives are what I got 
and just a few little torn leaves of infinite basil. Well, I think that actually looks pretty good. Okay, right, well, help yourself. Mind the dish is hot. Okay, right. Let's just have a little taste of the cheese and the sauce, I think, and then we'll uh, then we can put the camera away. Let me know what you think. Mm. Yeah, I really like that. The recipe actually said to have have olives in it, green olives. I don't have any green olives, and also I didn't put them in because I know you don't really like them. It's not very cheesy, but no, it's not. It's 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 very mild because it's yeah. obviously it's a fresh cheese. It's all right. You good? Mm. Okay. Okay, now to follow our cheesy lunch, we're going to have a cheesy dessert. So, one of my little shortbread biscuits, some of this ricotta cheese, which is actually quite, quite firmed up quite a bit overnight. Okay, I think that's probably enough. And then some of this pineapple in heather honey on top. Let's see what happens when we lift that up. Is it going to work? Kind of. Not bad. Well, for a moment anyway. Maybe what I'll do, I'll try it the other way up. Because there's a bit of a taper on that thing. So let's try that again. And here we go. Yeah, a bit better. Oh, come on <laughs> oh well that's as close as we're gonna get so that's not gonna be the thumbnail a little bit of that honey syrup over the top okay let's give this a try so crisp crunchy shortbread underneath okay so I've got a little bit of work to do on the presentation but that tastes amazing the pineapple and the honey just really offsets the cheese and the crispy shortbread just so well. In terms of flavour, that's a really good combination. In terms of presentation, could do better. Okay, it's another day and I've got some pineapple left and I've got some cheese of both varieties left. And I think rather than make some more of those shortbread things, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try to make some spiral kind of Danish pastry type of things with cheese and pineapple in them. So I don't think it matters too much that this grilling cheese has been salted and seasoned with mint mint and fruit not incompatible and a little bit of salt in a sweet flavored thing is often a bit of an enhancement to the flavor anyway that's my theory so i'm just going to cut this into very small cubes and i've already got some pineapple cut into small cubes i'm just going to cut some more of it up now with this pineapple I am going to squeeze out some of the juice. This juice I think I'll reserve and we can use that for glazing the buns when they come out of the oven. One day I will go to the trouble of making my own puff pastry just to prove I can do it. Today is not that day. My ricotta cheese is going to go on first. I'm just going to crumble that on and try and distribute it fairly evenly. Oh, I'm going to have trouble with the sun's in and out of clouds today, so if the lighting in this video is inconsistent, which I think it just is, that'll be why. Right, so that's my ricotta has gone on. And we'll just spread that out a little bit more evenly. Now, some of the pineapple. Now, Jenny said the pineapple shortbread mini cheesecake thing was a bit undersweet. I thought it was okay actually, but you know, different people have different tastes. So I think what I will do here is I'll sweeten this a little bit because it's going to have even more cheese in it and it has got a little bit of salt in as well. And sunlight's come out again, so that's going to make this all very difficult. So I'm just going to sweeten this with a couple of teaspoons of demerara sugar. It's good. 
I think that's enough. And this is the grilling cheese as well. So this is going to go on over the top of the pineapple. So quite a lot of cheese in here. So this could be interesting. It might be a disaster. Okay, so we've got the ricotta, we've got pineapple, we've got a little bit of sugar, and we've got the grilling cheese. Now one thing I happen to know goes well with pineapple is cinnamon. So I'm going to sprinkle a little dusting of cinnamon over the top of all of this before I roll it up. Really could do with standing behind it there, but it is what it is. Okay. And then I'm just going to wet this end here as I roll up the last little bit because that will help it to seal seal down. I'm just going to save these bits that have fallen out because I can use them for topping up anything that looks a bit empty when it's all cut up. I'm going to cut in half, in half again, and then one last time. So I'm getting eight pieces out of this. Ovenproof metal tray, a little bit of butter, just to help it not get stuck. And then carefully, somehow, transfer these rolls into that tray. Now I could bake these so that they will be all separate. I could use a bigger tray, but I'm actually going to embrace the possibility that they will just join up together. So all these little bits that came out of the thing when they were being rolled up, I'll just post them back into the gaps. So there they are. I'm just gonna chill that in the fridge while I preheat the oven up to 180 Celsius fan, and then we'll bake those until they're puffy and golden. Oven's just coming up to temperature now, and I'm just going to squish these down before I put them in the oven, just really to help them all hold together properly. Right, into the oven until they're puffed up and crispy. These have had about half an hour, and they're not done yet. They do need a bit more baking. But I think now is the point where I will just brush them with a little bit of this pineapple juice which will help to do two things. It will stop the tops from burning because the top bits are going a little bit toasty there. And just the moisture of this pineapple juice will prevent that from frazzling too much, but also it will caramelize a little bit. Back in the oven for another five to 10 minutes. And that's as far as I'm gonna take them. They're just going nicely toasty on top. They're still gonna be a little bit pale on the bottom, just where they're all clustered together, but I think that's fine. And I am gonna slap on another drizzle of this pineapple juice, which will kind of evaporate as they cool, and it will go sticky on top, that's the plan. Right, and now these have had a chance to cool down a little bit. I'm just gonna transfer them out onto a wire rack to cool completely coming out very nicely so let's just see what they look like on the inside yep so inside we've got the cheese is mostly kind of melted into the pastry but I think that's still going to be very nice but I can see chunks of pineapple there right tasting time mm. Mm, I like that mm, cheese in a Danish pastry gives it a real depth of flavour and even where the cheese is toasted on the top there that's a different texture really nice sort of flavour note yeah I'm happy with that so there we go three things I made with my homemade cheese I hope you found that interesting thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon <laughs>